the horrors and the 31 murders in October. We're late, Orr Hemming says sarcastically. Or Johnson, whatever shall we do? The two oars chuckle. The shop owner grimaces at the oars. Mr. Durham, says Orr Johnson. We are the only thing standing between you and a nutty wizard who thinks he'll be the next Dark Lord. Durham's shop was covered in butter beer, held by rotting wool and ghoul essence, which left a golden hue in the air. It smelled of seawater and chocolate, truly nauseating. Or Johnson looked above and saw a mermaid in a tank. Mermaids in London were not the beautiful maidens of the storybooks. They had long, stringy locks of hair, snake eyes, and mouths like piranhas. She swam across the ceiling, attempting to bite Or Johnson, unsuccessfully, from the glass ceiling. Or Hemmings began to question Wilford Durham. Mr. Durham, any leads on the twelve murders that took place in London this month? Wilford smirked. He enjoyed in testing Orr Hemmings. Maybe. Maybe not. Wilford looking down, smiling, and grabbing a glass bowl and cleaning it with a cleaning charm. Orr Hemmings cursed the old man in his mind for his tricky nature. What do you want, Durham? Wilford said quickly. Two months without ministry inspection. Orr Hemmings was shocked by the modesty of this request and noted in his mind that Wilford is probably doing an illegal potions deal during the months of October and November. Well, Durham, or Hemmings considered the consequences of the request and said, it depends on how strong the lead will be for our case. Durham said, there was a man who entered the establishment with skin as tan as Orr Johnson. He was a tall man with a slender body, but he had a right nasty scar which crossed his left eye. All you could see in his eyes was milk. Or Hemmings was unimpressed. The ministry was searching her operations every day for the next seven months. Durham grabbed Or Hemmings with his crinkly white fingers and said, Listen, you fool! He smiled, only revealing four teeth at the bottom of his infected mouth. A young boy attempted to steal from him, and he pulled out his wand and BAM! Durham slammed the table. He gave him a cruciatus curse and had him shaking and begging for his life. Or Hemming said nonchalantly, you should get security. Durham retorted, bad for business, now shut up! Or Johnson looked through the window to make sure there were no spies peeking at their informant. She gripped her 12-inch Elmwood wand with a veal of core, with a smoothness that reflected her experience as a master dueler. Or Johnson Hemmings were both in Hogwarts during the early 2000s. However, they were on opposite ends of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Johnson was a clever and resourceful Slytherin, and Hemmings was a courageous and attention-seeking Gryffindor. They might have been friends if only Hemmings was not so obnoxious at the Yule Ball. He cursed the Slytherin punch bowl with a tongue swelling charm, which landed her in the hospital wing for two weeks. Hemming still denies any involvement. Or Johnson believes he used oculumency to get out of expulsion. Durham continued his story. The boy continues shaking and cries, saying, Sir, I'm just hungry. Everyone stares and I start to sweat. He walks over and tell him, Do you want to be the seventh? Everyone watched, but no one dared to challenge the man with the milky eye. He sauntered over and released him, grabbed his massive sack of gold, left the store without a trace. Or Hemmings entered into his mind through legitimacy, ancient magic that allows the wizard to access one's thoughts and feelings, and, all, and told Or Hemmings, he's telling the truth. Or Johnson said, Your mermaid looks hungry. Durham said, The bitch only eats when people are on the tank. And unfortunately, it's against ministry regulations. Or Johnson was angered by Durham's lack of respect for magical creatures, but calmly left the establishment. They might be on the hunt for a serial killer. 
maybe the next Dark Lord. <laughs>